Hi, this is Susie with Creative Cafe, and I want to do a quick tutorial on how I did my gatefold mini. Now, I didn't have a gate, uh, the gatefold mini uh, anymore to be able to show it to you uh, for the tutorial, so I'm just going to kind of use this as a guide. Um, I made my gatefold a 9 by 7, uh, 9 being long and 7 being wide. And what I basically did was I created two mini albums. So I'm just going to pretend that this would be two pages of my mini album. Um, so I created one for my left side and I created one for my right side. So when I created the one that has my binding on my left side, what I did was just made it like a normal mini, just like you see here. But now um, all the tags and anything that would have pulled out will have to be just like you would if you were just making a regular mini. So then for the album that you make that is going to be on this um, uh, right side, you want to be sure to make it all where when you open it, all your tags and everything are going to be pulling out the opposite way than you normally would. So all of your tags and everything need to be able to pull out, or if you have any of the swing pages that are going to open up, they all need to open up going to your left side. So um, that's basically it. Now you'll need to make a front chipboard cover for both your sides, but now the back, you're not going to want to make your chipboard cover until the very end. So I made each page. And each page, I went ahead and bound my holes. Um, and uh, all I did was stick it in the bind it all, just like I did any of the others. And I simply just lined it up even, punched my holes, lined it up even, and punched my holes. And uh, that way I didn't get in any uh, mess, you know, with um, getting them off uh, centered if I just lined them up and punched them. So, uh, once you've done that, and you've got both albums made, and you've got your front uh, chipboard covers made, if you're using chipboard covers, then what you want to do is whatever size of album that you are making, you just want to measure it going across, and you want to double that. So, if this was 7 and this was 7, then I want a 14, at least a 14 inch um, back chipboard piece and I added a fourth inch so my back piece was actually 14 and a fourth and this is how I made it I took a piece of chipboard now all I had was 12 by 12 pieces uh, so I cut it down to make my nine uh, being long and then I actually had to take my 12 inch wide piece and add another two and a fourth inches of chipboard to it. So I had a 12 by 9 piece and then a two and a fourth by 9 piece. Now I use this extra wide um, duct tape and I don't even think you can find this extra wider. I can't around here. It was some my husband had. and But anyway, I tried to find some more of it and I can't find it. So the regular size duct tape will work just fine. Now you could have wrapped it around, but no, I didn't. I placed it on there and I cut it off even uh, because I didn't want the duct tape showing um, on either side. So uh, they're on my edges. So I just run it even and I cut it off even. Then I inked all of my edges up. And I inked it here as well. But when I cut my paper, I tried very hard to make sure that it went completely to the top. That way you didn't see anything except for the, the outer or what do you want to call this little ridge. That's all I wanted to show. So anyway, that's what I did. So this piece was a... Um, 14 and a fourth by 9. 
then when I got ready to cover and I actually added an extra little piece here of the duct tape because I wanted it a little extra sturdier so I just uh, I just put that but when I papered this I made sure it was on the very back side so when I opened my book and this was the the part that showed on the inside you didn't see that extra piece there if it if it even bumped up a little bit and um, this here laid nice and flat even when I papered it you really couldn't see that that was taped so and I'll show you why when I got ready to paper this because of course the paper is just 12 by 12 I cut my paper down and this isn't cut but to the size of this but I'm just gonna get, sh kinda show it to you so what I did was I lined it up even now this is on the inside and I lined it up even and I adhered it on then because I had this extra and I just centered it so I had the same amount kind of on both sides I just centered it and then what I had to do was I had to take a piece and I either use I think on one of them I used a decorative punch and what I did is I just cut this however big however wide I wanted it and what I did was I just cut it decorative and overlaid it on both sides and then on one of the albums I actually just tore it you know and uh, had it lay you know where it was torn and then I inked up my sides there but just something to overlay it where uh, you know it made up that difference but that was basically how I did the back of it uh, really simple and then what I did was I just took this here I got my bind it all after I after I papered it all and I did the same thing I just laid it in there even punched it brought it over here punched it then I flipped it and did the same thing on both sides and punched my holes and then what it did when I done that is it caused my pages to just be in the exact same spot of course this isn't I did it these are just examples but if it was uh, actually a seven it would have kind of met about like that and I had just that little bit of space in there so that the album wasn't bunching on each other you know for each side but really that's how I done it so um, whatever just remember whatever size of album you are making just double it and add a fourth of an inch to your back chipboard piece and then that way um, you have that little added extra that's basically how I did it um, if you have any questions you know feel free to message me I'll be glad to try to help you uh, and answer your questions and anyway I hope that helps thanks so much for watching